Good day, ladies and gentlemen. You're all very welcome to this week's CNPS technical presentation. Um, I, I had to be a, a, a little careful because um, uh, you in the United States ha have changed to um, daylight saving time, but we haven't yet uh, in, in Western Europe. So uh, we'll be doing that at the, last, uh, the end of the month. So it's actually one hour earlier for me, but we're all ready and um, our speaker is, is here and so on. Um, and you've, you've probably got the announcement that um, it's actually an interesting concept, which, which will be explained in, in, in great detail over the next hour. Uh, it's called a, a, a hypersphere world universe model, which I think the speaker calls WUM for, for short. Uh, it, it's, it's actually world universe mode, sorry, mode, model probably, addresses some known problems with currently accepted cosmological model and is supported by empirical data from a variety of sources. Now, it seems to me from just perusing this and having a look at some of the information in previous times uh, that, that Vladimir has been kind enough to send me, that it is uh, questioning very fundamentally uh, existing mainstream ideas. And um, the interesting thing about this is that this is a very comprehensive model. Uh, and he's divided it into eight parts. I think there are eight parts altogether. Part one, which we'll be looking at today, is uh, concerned with the medium of the world. Uh, I, I, I'll just um, re read the spiel j j just to j have it down in case you don't have it in front of you. The WUM addresses some known problems with the currently accepted cosmological model and is supported by empirical data from a variety of sources. And both these topics will be presented as the series of presentations progresses, as I say. Now, in part one, which we shall be dealing with today, we discuss the most important issues in classical physics, give principal points of the developed WAUM, introduce the medium of the world, consisting of protons, electrons, photons, neutrinos, and dark matter particles, Calculate parameters of intergalactic plasma, cosmic microwave background radiation, far infrared background radiation, which are in good agreement uh, with the latest experimental results, and explain the Hubble tension problem, which I, I'm looking forward to hearing. Now, as I say, this is the first uh, of a multi part series which we've negotiated with Vladimir. And um, the plan at present, we'll, we'll, we'll confirm this by. Uh, you know, notification, but the plan at present is, is we'll have parts one and two sequentially, and then we'll have a short break where we'll have another another topic on our technical session, and then we'll probably resume and go through the other um, perhaps six parts, and we'll, we'll announce those when, when the time comes. So, um, uh, so our speaker, um, Vladimir said I didn't have to struggle with his surname, but I'll, I'll, I'll try just once, once. It's Vladimir, and I think the nearest will be Nechitailo. Um, so um, he, he's been uh, participating actually for some time in our conferences and making valuable contributions. And he, he has been um, alerting some of us to this world universe model, which he's been working on for many years. Um, I, I think Vladimir is from Ukraine originally, and he studied in Moscow. He, he might just say a few words about himself, because not all of you will, will, will know him. Uh, now let me see. Yeah, so so um, Vladimir tells me that he 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 he's scheduled to speak for about fifty minutes. He's actually timed it, and he's going to have um, all the text of his talk up on the screen, so you can follow it at your leisure. And um, so don't worry if there's too much there. He'll be actually reading every single aspect of it. And um, as usual, we'd like um, to have a, a short. Q and A uh, and discussion at the end. So, if you have any specific questions in the chat, you might put them in question for Vladimir, because otherwise uh, it could be missed. We might think you're just uh, commenting uh, between yourselves. But, but we, we will keep an eye on, on the questions and we'll uh, we'll address those. Um, in in extremis, in an extreme emergency, if there's something that really you'll be flummoxed you at, or or you just feel you didn't understand, you could put in. Please interrupt Vladimir. I didn't understand this, and he will he will agree to stopping the lecture and dealing with that point. But un unless it, it, it's a real emergency, we'd prefer you to wait until after the lecture, and then we can deal at our leisure 
uh, during the, the discussion. We, we'll also, as normal, have a number of people in the green room, and um, we will invite them to come up for a more detailed discussion. So we'll we'll have uh, over an hour for discussion at the end. And um, I, I see people are beginning big, beginning to, to log in now. So um, without my taking up further time, I just still want to do one thing uh, for you all or for the society, and that is just to play a very short video on the fundraising endeavor, which I still is, is still live. So I'll do that. I'll do that now without further ado. If I, if I can find where it is. <clears throat> yeah, there we are. Maybe, maybe it's gone. David DeHilster still has it here. Yes, here it is. Hello, my name is David DeHilster and I'm president of the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society. Hello, my name is David DeHilster and I'm president of Hello, my name is David DeHilster and I'm president of the John Chappelle Natural Philosophy Society. Our organization is unique in the world in that we allow for serious criticisms of mainstream science from physics to cosmology and from math to philosophy. And today, this organization resides 100% online. If you enjoy our Saturday morning talks, our websites, and the community of amazing critical thinkers you can interact with on the internet, then please consider contributing to our annual fund drive. It costs almost $3,000 per year to keep our internet presence and our Saturday morning talks alive and well. I want to thank all of our members who pay monthly and annual memberships, which is vital to our day-to-day -day operations. But unfortunately, this is not enough. And that's why we're looking to raise $2,000 in our 2024 drive. So if you don't want this organization to disappear, and you think that its mission is important, then please consider donating to the CNPS. It's vital to keeping science moving forward. Please go to fund.naturalphilosophy.org and donate today. Thanks once again from all of us at the CNPS. Your donation is vital. And I think that that's been resulting in some um, input into the funds, which are greatly appreciated and very helpful. Right. Um, OK, well, we've, we've absorbed 10 minutes. Um, so I, I think uh, the, the, the talk uh, sh should bring us up to the, the hour. Uh, that will be 11 a.m. North American time. So I'm going to hand over to Vladimir now. He's going to put up his um, text as well. And then when that is up, it'll only take a moment or two and he's begun sharing things. I'll disappear, but I'll stay on for a moment or two in case I'm required. So good day to you. Um, good morning to you and good afternoon from here, uh, Vladimir. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Let's start. So if you if you put up your information, I'll uh, I'll stay on just for a moment until it's up and then I'll Leave everything to you, Vladimir. Okay, okay, thank you so much. I will do it. <clears throat> right, some here it is. It is my text. So I'm going to disappear, but if you need me, just call me and I'll come back. But it, it, the floor is all yours now for the next uh, almost an hour. Thank you so much. I will read the text of my presentation with some comments. Hope that this helps you to better understand the essence of my model. Nick recommended me to do this. First of all, let me introduce myself. I received a Master of Science degree from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology, a PhD in quantum electronics from Moscow Deputy Physical Institute, and a Doctor of Sciences in Laser Physics from Moscow Institute of General Physics. I have published over 200 papers, including 40 articles, co-authored by Alexander Prokhorov, Nobel laureate in physics 1964. Since 2001, I have been developing a model that I dubbed World Universe Model, WOM, which is a, in fact a paradigm shift for cosmology and classical physics. WOM has had a good record of accomplishment on predicting cosmological parameters with a high degree of accuracy. 
In 2014, Lou, who was one of the organizers of the Codata Royal Society meeting in London, said the Newtonian gravitational constant G holds an important place in physics. Though there have been about 300 measurements of G since the first laboratory measurement by Cavendish over 200 years ago, its measurement precision is the worst among all the fundamental physics constants. In 2013, based on the revealed interconnectivity of cosmological parameters, Wun calculated a value of G and recommended it to all members of the meeting. No breakthrough in G that uh, measurements have been achieved in 2014. Nevertheless, in 2015, Codata recommended a value of G that is three times more accurate than the previous one. In 2018, the recommendation improved further. Since 2013, the relative standard uncertainty of G measurements reduced six times. It was the very first success of room. Over 200 years, about 300 measurements and no success. The very first proposal of room and the accuracy of the measurement increased three times. Not bad for the beginning. <clears throat> Physics and mathematics. Physics is an experimental science. In my opinion, there is a principal difference between physics and mathematics. I am convinced that physics cannot exist without mathematics, but mathematics must not replace physics. It is exactly what has happened for the last hundred years. I absolutely agree with John von Neumann who said, the sciences do not try to explain. They hardly even try to interpret. They mainly make models. By a model is meant a mathematical construct, which with addition of certain verbal interpretations, described observed phenomena. The justification of such a mathematical construct is solely and precisely that it is expected to work. In my view, the value of models is not only describing observed, observed phenomena, but making verifiable predictions and setting up targeted experiments based on the obtained experimental results. Classical physics. <clears throat> Emergent phenomena. By definition, emergent phenomenon is the property that is the result of simple interactions that work cooperatively to create a more complex interaction. They occur at a microscopic level, and the collective result can be observed at a macroscopic level. For example, temperature of the ideal gas, that is a classical notion, is proportional to the average kinetic energy of its particles. The temperature knows nothing about movement of each particle, and particles have kinetic energies only. They have no idea about the temperature. Classical physics is dealing with ensembles of quantum objects. Electrodynamic constant. In 1857, Weber and Kohlrausch determined that there was a quantity related to electricity and magnetism the ratio of the absolute electrostatic unit of charge to the absolute electromagnetic unit of charge and determined that it should have units of velocity. In modern language, it is an electrodynamic constant C according to formula where mu zero is the permeability of free space and epsilon zero is the permittivity of free space. They measured this ratio by an experiment with which involved charging and discharging the Leyden jar and measuring the magnetic force from the discharge current and found the value of C remarkably close to the speed of light, which had recently been measured by Fizeau in 1849. However, Weber and Courage didn't make the connection to the speed of light. They were genius to measure one of the most important electrodynamic constants by experiments with Leyden jar, it's unbelievable. Maxwell equations were published by Maxwell in 1861. 
He calculated the velocity of electromagnetic waves from the value of the electrodynamic constant C measured by Weber and, and Kolarovich. And notice that the calculated velocity was very close to the speed of light measured by his own. This observation made him suggest that light is an electromagnetic phenomenon. We emphasize that C in Maxwell equations is the electrodynamic constant, but not the speed of light in vacuum. According to Maxwell equations, electromagnetic waves in any bulk material travel at velocity that is a function of permeability and permittivity of material, where mu m is equals mu r mu zero, epsilon m equals epsilon r epsilon zero, and mu r and epsilon r are the relative permeability and permittivity of the material respectively. Then the velocity of electromagnetic waves equals to C over root square of mu r epsilon r. In case of vacuum, mu r and epsilon r equals 1, the velocity equals T. In case of outer space, with mu r more than 1, the velocity less than C. It follows that there is no miracle in the maximum value of the velocity of electromagnetic waves that equals to the value of the electrodynamic constant C. In any bulk, bulk material, the velocity less than T. Ether. Physical ether was suggested as early as 18th century by Newton. Following the work of Jung and Fresnel, it was believed that light propagates as a transverse wave with an inelastic medium called luminiferous ether. At that time, it was realized that ether could not be an elastic matter of ordinary type that can only transmit longitudinal waves. Unique properties of ether were discussed by Mark Kulak in 1846, who proposed a theory of rotational elastic medium. The potential energy of deformation in such a medium depends only on the rotation of the volume elements and not on their compression or general distortion. This theory produces equations analogous to Maxwell equations. Ether with these properties can transmit transverse waves. He was a genius. It turned out that abandoning of the luminiferous ether in 1905 by special relativity was crucial for classical physics. It is a great pity that the mainstream physicists at that time did know or forgot a theory developed by Mark Kulak, who said the constitution of the ether, if it ever would be discovered, will be found to be quite different from anything that we are in the habit of conceiving, though at the same time very simple and very beautiful. An elastic medium composed of pointing, points acting on each other in the way supposed by Poisson and others will not answer. The Friedman equations were derived in 1922 from Einstein's field equations for Friedman, Lemartier, Robertson, Walker method and the perfect fluid, either exists or not in general relativity. In later years, there have been classical physicists who advocated for the existence of ether. Nicola Testo declared in 1937, all attempts to explain the working of the universe without recognizing the existence of the ether and the indispensable function it plays in the phenomena are futile and destined to oblivion. Paul Dirac stated in 1951 in article, is there an ether that we are rather forced to have an ether? Wom is based on Maxwell equations. Mark Kulak theory is a good fit for description of the medium. There are no luminiferous ether and vacuum. The model introduces the medium that is composed of stable elementary particles, protons, electrons, photons, neutrinos, and dark matter particles. Medium is a savior of classical physics. 
Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Hypersphere World Universe Model. I would like to give you an introduction to my model so that you will be aware of a new picture of the world without details, which I will provide you in the following presentations. Primary assumptions. Womb is based on the following primary assumptions. World is a finite, boundless 3D hypersphere or 4D nucleus of the world, which is expanding along the fourth spatial dimension of the nucleus with speed equal to the gravity dynamic along uh, constant C. The 3D world is curved in the fourth spatial dimension. Eternal universe is the creator of dark matter, which is continuously created in the nucleus of the world. Ordinary matter is a byproduct of dark matter particle self-annihilation. Medium of the world is an active agent in the all physical phenomena in the world. Two fundamental parameters in various rational exponents define all macro and micro features of the world. Dimensionless Rydberg con constant alpha where R is the Rydberg constant and A is a basic size unit, and dimensionless time varying quantity Q, that is in fact the Dirac's large number. Alpha now named the fine structure constant. Principal points. <coughs> Womb is based on the following principal points. Beginning. The world was started by a fluctuation in the eternal universe and the nucleus of the world, which is the 4D ball, was born. An extrapolated nucleus radius at the beginning was equal to the basic size unit of A. The extrapolated energy density of the world at the beginning, who x was, was four orders of magnitude smaller than the nuclear energy density. The world is a finite, boundless 3D hypersphere that is the surface of the 4D nucleus. All points of the hypersphere are equivalent. There are no preferred centers or boundaries of the world. Stretching of the world. The 4G nucleus expanding along its fourth spatial dimension so that the radius of the nucleus R is increasing with the speed C, that is the gravity dynamic constant. Its surface, the 3D hypersphere, is evenly stretched. The stretching of the hypersphere goal can be understood through the analogy with expanding 3D balloon. Imagine an ant residing on a seemingly two-dimensional surface of, of a balloon. As the balloon is blown up, its radius increases and its surface grows. The distance between any two points on the surface increases. The ant sees her world expand but do doesn't know doesn't observe a preferred center. Unbeknown to ants, the center is not located on the surface, but instead is removed along the inaccessible third dimension. It is in the center of the balloon. What does the balloon expand into? It expands in perpendicular down-up direction that is inaccessible to perception and therefore from the surface of the balloon. One cannot point out the direction of the expansion. Likewise, the 3D hypersphere world expands along the imperceptible fourth dimension. The center of the world is in the center of 4D nucleus, in that very inaccessible fourth dimension. We do not know that our 3D space is curved, but we know that it is stretching without center of stretching. According to Wum, all parameters of world depending on Q, which is the ratio of a radius to A, are a manifestation of the world's curvature in the fourth spatial dimension. Creation of matter. <coughs> the surface of nucleus is created in a process analogous to sublimation. Continuous creation of matter is the result of this process. Sublimation is a well-known process that happens when surfaces 
are intrinsically more energetically favorable than the bulk of a material. And hence, there is a driving force for surfaces to be created. The universe is responsible for the creation of dark matter in 4D nucleus of the world. Dark matter particles carry new dark matter into the world. Ordinary matter is a byproduct of dark matter particle self annihilation. By analogy with 3D ball, which has a 2D spherical surface that has surface energy, we can imagine the 3D hypersphere world has a surface energy of 4D nucleus. The growth of this surface of 4D nucleus means that the increase of the world's so named surface energy. Proposed 4D process is responsible for 4D nucleus expansion, 3D world stretching, creation of, the uh, of matter and arrow of time. It constitutes the main hypothesis of womb. In my view, the arrow of the cosmological time doesn't depend on any physical phenomenon in the medium of the world. It is the result of the nucleus expansion due to the, the driving force for surfaces to be created. It is important to emphasize that creation of matter is a direct consequence of the nucleus expansion. Creation of dark matter occurs homogeneously in all points of the hypersphere world. Content of the world. The world consists of the medium and macro objects. Total energy density of the world equals to the critical energy density throughout the world's evolution. The energy density of the medium is two thirds of the total energy density. And macro objects, superclusters, galaxies, extrasolar systems, etc., one third in all cosmological times. The relative energy density of dark matter particles is about 92.8%, and ordinary particles, protons, electrons, photons, and neutrinos, about 4.8% in the medium of the world and 2.4% in macro objects. Rotational fission. The mechanism that can provide angular momentum to macro objects is a rotational fission of over spinning surface speed at equator exceeding escape velocity prime objects. From the point of view of fission models, the prime object is transferring some of its rotational momentum of the prime object uh, momentum to orbital and rotational momenta of satellites. It follows that the rotational momentum of the prime object should exceed the orbital momentum of its satellite. In whom prime objects are dark matter cores of superclusters, which must accumulate tremendous rotational angular momenta before the birth of a luminous world. It means that it must be some long enough time in the history of the world, which we named Dark Epoch. Dark Epoch is spanning from the beginning of the world, 14.22 billion years ago, for 0 0.45 billion years for Lanikia supercluster that is home to Milky Way galaxy, when only dark matter macro object existed. Luminous Epoch is lasting ever since for 13.77 billion years, when luminous macro objects emerged due to an explosive volcanic rotational fission of over spinning dark matter superclusters cause and self annihilation of dark matter particles. Macro object shell model. Macro objects of the world possess the following properties. Their cores are made up of dark matter particles. They contain other particles, including dark matter particles and auditory particles, in shells surrounding the cores. Introduced weak interaction between dark matter particles and ordinary particles provides integrity of all shells. Dark matter reactors. Macro object cores are essentially dark matter reactors fueled by dark matter particles. All chemical elements, compositions, radiations, are produced by macro objects themselves as the result of dark matter particles self-annihilation in their dark matter cores. 
nuclear synthesis of all in elements occurs inside of macro objects during their evolution. Macro object formation. Superclusters are the principal objects of the world. Macro objects, superclusters, galaxies, and extrasolar systems form in parallel around different cores made up of different dark matter particles. 3D finite boundless world presents a patchwork quilt of different luminous superclusters which emerged in different places of the world at different cosmological times. The distribution of macro objects in the world is spatially inhomogeneous and anisotropic and temporally not simultaneous. Macro structures of the world from, form from the top supercluster down to galaxies, extrasolar systems, planets, and moons. Macro object evolution. Formation of galaxies and stars is not a process that concluded ages ago. Instead, it is ongoing. Assuming the eternal universe, numbers of cosmological structures on all levels will increase. New superclusters will form. Existing clusters will obtain new galaxies. New stars will be born inside existing galaxies. Sizes of individual stars will increase. Most direct observational evidence of validity of womb. Microwave background radiation, MBR, intergalactic plasma, and fine infrared background radiation speak in favor of existence of the medium of the world. Laniakia supercluster with binding mass about 10 to the power 17 mass of the sun is home to the Milky Way galaxy and about 10 to the power 5 other nearby galaxies which didn't start their movement from initial singularity. The neighboring superclusters are sharply, coma, and Perseus Pisces. Distance from the Earth to the center of the Laniakia superclusters is about 250 million light years. Milky Way is gravitationally bounded with the weird supercluster and has an orbital angular momentum calculated based on distance of 65 million light years from the Virga supercluster and the orbital speed of about 400 kilometers per second, which far exceeds rotational angular momentum of Milky Way. Mass to light ratio of the Virga superclusters is about 300 times larger than the of solar ratio. Sim Similar ratios are obtained for other superclusters. These ratios are main arguments in favor of presence of significant amounts of dark matter in the world. Astronomers discovered the most distant galaxy, HD1, that is 13.5 billion light years away, and a candidate galaxy, F200DB-045, which is 13.7 billion light away. As a conclusion, medium of the world, dark matter and angular momentum are main three pillars of womb. The described picture of the world is in fact a paradigm shift for cosmology. Medium of the world. Womb introduces the medium of the world which consists of stable elementary particles with lifetimes longer than the age of the world, protons, electrons, photons, neutrinos, and dark matter particles. The medium is homogeneous and isotropic. The existence of the medium is a principal point of womb. There are no luminiferous ether, perfect fluid, and vacuum in womb. Intergalactic voids discussed by astronomers are in fact examples of the medium and its purest. MBR is a part of the medium. It then follows that the medium is the absolute frame of reference. Relative to MBR rest frame, the Milky Way galaxy and the Sun are moving with a speed of 552 and 370 kilometers per second, respectively. Time, space, and gravitation are closely connected with impedance, 
gravitomagnetic parameter and energy density of the medium, respectively. It follows that neither time, space, nor gravitation could be discussed in absence of the medium. Wundt confirmed the supremacy of matter postulated by Einstein. When forced to summarize the theory of relativity in one sentence, time and space and gravitation have no separate existence from matter. There is no medium, there is nothing. Womb based on cosmological time tau that marches on at the constant pace from the beginning of the world up to the present epoch, along with time varying cosmological parameters. Gravity is not an interaction, but a manifestation of the medium. Principal role of Maxwell equations. Maxwell equations form the foundation of classical electrodynamics and gravitomagnetism. The value of Maxwell's equations is even greater because Swain showed that linearized general relativity admits a formulation in terms of gravitoelectric and gravitomagnetic fields that closely parallels the description of the electromagnetic field by Maxwell's equations. We emphasize that gravitomagnetism considers not only interactions between masses, but also between mass cards. Ludwig, in a paper, Galactic Rotation Curve and Dark Matter According to Gravitomagnetism, published in 2021, wrote, most theory used to explain the rotation curve have been restricted to the Newtonian potential framework, disregarding the general relativistic corrections associated with the mass currents. The effects attributed to dark matter can be simply explained by the gravitomagnetic field produced by the mass currents. The explanation of galactic rotation curves made by Ludwig is in a good agreement with Wu. Directly measured cosmological parameters. There are only two directly measured cosmological parameters, the gravitational parameter G and the temperature of cosmic microwave background radiation. Lee et al. experimentally measured the most accurate value of G using two independent methods with accuracy about 11.6 parts per million, which are in excellent agreement with the value of G predicted by Wum in 2013. Please compare the value of G1 with the calculated value by Wum. In 2009, Pixon measured the value of MBR temperature with accuracy 30 parts per million. It means that the most accurate parameter of G is G and all other cosmological parameters could be in principle calculated based on the value of G with the same accuracy. Thanks to revealed by whom interconnectivity of cosmological parameters, we show that G that can be measured directly makes measurable all cosmological parameters which cannot be measured directly. We will discuss it beneath. Interconnectivity of cosmological parameters. Below, I am not going to overload you with mathematics. My intention is to prove that all cosmological parameters are calculated with well-known classical equations. The constancy of universe fundament fundamental constants, including G, is now commonly accepted, although it has never been firmly established as a fact. A commonly held opinion states that gravity has no established relation to other fundamental forces, so it doesn't appear possible to calculate it from other constants that can be measured more accurately as is done in other areas of physics. Wom holds that there indeed exist relations between all cosmological parameters that depend on dimensional time varying quantity Q. We will discuss it below. That is a, me a measure of the size R 
and H A tau of the world according to the equation, where T0 is the basic unit of time, Q in the present epoch equals to this value. Energy density of the world. Imagine that the world is a Hubble bubble with the radius R equals C tau, where C is the gravity dynamic constant and tau is a cosmological time. And N an energy density of a spherical surface that equals to a basic unit of surface energy density, sigma zero, that equals Rc over A cube, where H is the Planck constant. With Nikola Tesla's principle at heart, there is no energy in matter other than then received from the environment. We calculate an energy of the world and its average energy density that is inversely proportional to R. Rho zero is the basic unit of energy density. Critical energy density. The principal idea of Bloom is that the energy density of the world equals to the critical energy density, which can be found by considering a sphere of radius Rm and an enclosed mass m that can be calculated by multiplication of critical mass density by the volume of the sphere. When the world has the critical energy density, a Hubble velocity equals to the escape velocity, which gives an equation for the critical energy density. We emphasize that rho critical can be found by the Hubble's law only. We do not need general relativity for this. This equation can be written as follows, where mu g is the gravitomagnetic parameter and rho m, two sort of rho critical, is the energy density of the medium. Considering that H inversely proportional to R, it is easy to see that the gravitational parameter G is inversely proportional to R too. We emphasize that the values of the main cosmological parameters G and H depend on the value of the energy density rho m that is the characteristic of the medium of the world which is the homogeneous and isotropic. Gravitational parameter G and Dirac large number Q. Considering the equations which we discussed before, we can find the wall falling equation for G. An average value of gravitational parameter G average of experimentally measured values by Lee et al. allows us to calculate value of Q average based on value of G average. Below, we will use the value of Q average for the calculation of all cosmological parameters. Intergalactic plasma. In whom the world consists of stable elementary particles, protons with mass Mp and electrons with mass Me have identical concentrations According to plasma physics, intergalactic plasma consisting of protons and electrons has plasma frequency according to the equation. We substitute the following equation into the equation above, where nu zero is a basic frequency unit, and calculate concentrations Np and Ne, which equals to 0 0.255 per cubic meter. Rho P is the energy density of protons in the medium. The relative energy density of protons in the medium is the ratio of rho p over rho critical, which equals to 4.8%. According to whom the relative energy density of variance in macro object is half of this value, 2.4%. In my opinion, Measurements of intergalactic plasma parameters can be done by investigations of fast radio bursts, which are millisecond duration radio signals originating from distant galaxies. These signals are dispersed according to precise physical law, and this dispersion is a key observable quantity that in tandem with redshift measurement can be used for physical investigations. The dispersion measure and redshift conducted by Keanu et al. 
in 2016 provide the measurement of the cosmic density of ionized baryons in the intergalactic by uh, medium that equals to 4.9 plus minus 1.3 percent. That is in excellent agreement with the predicted by Wum in 2013 value 4.8 percent. Using the equation for electrons concentration, we calculated the value of photons time delay which is in a good agreement with experimentally measured value by Keane et al. Please compare apple to apple. Minimum energy of photons. Analysis of intergalactic plasma shows that the value of the lowest plasma frequency, new minimum, is about 4.5 Hz. Photons with energy smaller than H new minimum cannot propagate in plasma. Thus, H new minimum is the smallest amount of energy a photon may possess, which equals to the value about 1.8 multiplied 10 to the minus 14 electron volts. The above value predicted by Wong in 2013 is in a good agreement with the value obtained by Bonetti et al. in 2017. Origin of Cosmic Microwave Background Radiation, MBR. According to the standard Big Bang model, the photons that existed at the time of photon decoupling, 380,000 years after the Big Bang, have been propagating ever since, though growing fainter and less energetic since the expansion of space causes the wavelengths to increase over time. These photons are the same photons that we see in MBR now. But then, why is MBR is perfect black body? What is the mechanism of photons wavelengths increasing over time and growing in fainter and less energetic? According to whom, wavelengths is the classical notion. Photons, which are quantum objects, have only four momentum. They do not have wavelengths. By definition, black body radiation is the thermal electromagnetic radiation within or surrounding a body in the thermodynamic equilibrium with its environment. In whom the black body spectrum of MBR is due to thermodynamic equilibrium of photons with intergalactic plasma, the existence of which is experimentally proved by fast radio bursts. It explains why MBR is a perfect black body radiation. Rho E is the energy density of, of, of electrons in the medium. We assume that the energy density of MBR equals to twice the value of Rho E due to two polarizations of photons. And consider the Stefan Boltzmann law, where Kb is the Boltzmann constant, the calculated value of TMBR is 2.725245 degrees Kelvin. Thus, calculated value is in excellent agreement with experimentally measured value of 2.725.48 by fixing in 2009. Let us proceed to calculate the value of TMBR at different ages of the world. At the age of 0.45 billion years, beginning of luminous epoch, the temperature was about 6.5 degrees Kelvin. At the age 9.6 billion years, birth of solar system, it was about 3 degrees Kelvin. At the age 14.22 billion years, present epoch, it's 2725 to 45 Kelvin, as I showed before. Observe that all macro objects, galaxies, stars, planets, moons, have arisen in the cold world. Our solar system, for instance, was created when the temperature of MBR was about 3K. Therefore, any model describing creation of macro objects must hold true in the cold world conditions. Fine for red background radiation. The cosmic fine for red background radiation which was announced in 1998, is part of the cosmic infrared background with 
wavelengths near 100 micron. That is, is the peak power wavelengths of the black body radiation at temperature 29K. We calculated the temperature of this peak, 28.955 Kelvin. That is in excellent agreement with the experimentally measured value of 29K. Primary cosmological parameters. According to whom the following parameters of the world depend on Q. Newtonian parameter of gravitation, Hubble's parameter, age of the world, the world radius of curvature, critical energy density, concentration of intergalactic plasma, minimum energy of photons, temperature of MPR, temperature of fine infrared background radiation peak. In frames of room, all these cosmological parameters are a manifestation of the world's curvature in the fourth spatial dimension. They can be calculated based on experimentally measured value of G average and Q average as we showed above. Hubble's parameter and age of the world. The most important parameters in cosmology are the Hubble's parameter H0 and age of the world A tau, which we can calculate by the following equations. IH0 equals to 68.73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, and age equals to 14.22 billion years. We emphasize that the Hubble's parameter and absolute age of the world are determined by the experimentally measured value of G average. Hubble tension. The result of measurements of the Hubble's constant H0, which characterizes the expansion rate of the universe, shows that the values of H vary, vary significantly depending on methodology. The disagreement in the values of H obtained by the various teams far exceeds the standard uncertainties provided with the values. This discrepancy is called the Hubble tension. In frames of room, the Hubble tension can be explained the following way. Hubble's law in standard cosmology is valid for the Big Bang model only, when all galaxies start their movement from a single point named initial singularity. That is not the case in room. The main conjecture of Big Bang model, projecting galaxies' trajectory backwards in time, means that they converge to the initial singularity at t equals zero, that is an infinite energy density state, is wrong because all galaxies are gravitationally bound with their superclusters. In womb, the 3D finite boundless world presents a patchwork quilt of different luminous superclusters, which emerged at different places and cosmological times. Please take a look at this figure. This is the picture of the real world. The redshift of the center of the Laniakia supercluster is 0 0.0708, but it does not mean that it is moving away from Milky Way. On the contrary, Milky Way is moving away from the center of the supercluster. Some galaxies are moving toward Milky Way and the other are moving away. Then redshift depends on the position and movement of a particular galaxy in the supercluster against Milky Way. More complicated situation with redshift is when galaxies belong to neighboring superclusters. No wonder that according to Gupta, over 8,300 hundreds belong to neighboring supercluster. Uh, uh, galaxies have been discovered beyond the local group in 2009. The Andromeda galaxy is the nearest galaxy to the Milky Way, which is blue shifted. How to explain all these results in standard cosmology? According to Wu, the value of H should be measured based on MBR only. The calculated value of the Hubble's parameter in 2013 is in excellent agreement 
with the most re recent measurement value in 2021 using only MBR data. Conclusion. Wom doesn't attempt to explain all available cosmological data, as that is an impossible feat for any one presentation. Nor does Wom pretend to have built an all-encompassing theory that can be accepted as is. The model needs significant further elaboration and should be developed into a well-elaborated theory by the entire physical community. Womb is a natural continuation of classical physics, and it can already serve as a basis for a new cosmology proposed by Paul Deere. Considering GWST discoveries, successes of Womb, and 86 years of Deere's proposals, it is high time to make a paradigm shift for cosmology and classical physics. Acknowledgements. I'm always grateful to academician Prokhorov and Professor Maninko, whose influence on my scientific life has been decisive. I am eternally grateful to my scientific father, Paul Dirac, who was a genius and foresaw the future of physics in a new cosmology. I am forever grateful to Nikola Tesla, who was a genius. I am much obliged to Professor Corbin, for publishing my manuscripts in the Journal of High Energy Physics, Gravitation, and Cosmology. I am grateful to Nick Percival for his useful comments and suggestions, which have led to an overall improvement of the presentation. Special thanks to my son, Ilya, who helped me clarify the model and improve its understanding. Thank you so much for your attention. I'm ready to answer all your questions. Please be ready. Well, well, thank you very much for that very stimulating lecture. And that, that's only one eighth of, of you know, the, the totality of the subject that we'll be looking at dealing with the world universe model. Um, the, the timing was perfect. You've actually got it to, to a T, Vladimir, in your rehearsal. And I think your exposition was actually very, very clear. Having the text up there, it was, it was a little small for many of us, but if you maximized it, you could actually read uh, what, what, what you were saying. Um, maybe just a couple of observations before going to the questions and discussion. Um, if I can read my own writing here, I, I made a number of notes, but I, I, I was interested in a number of things. For example, you you pointed to the initial uh, measurement of, of the uh, uh, electromagnetic speed of light, if you like, from the electric and magnetic constants, the, the, the weber kellroch experiment. And you said that was approximately, but not identically, equal to what we might ter term the kinematic speed, you know, measured speed. So, so this is maybe giving us some idea that perhaps there's some medium there. Um, and you, you, you mentioned, of course, the <clears throat> statements of people like uh, Nikola Telsa and uh, P.A.M. Dirac, uh, whose work, uh, incidentally, you said you're following to a certain extent. And then he, even later on, uh, Einstein, when he was interested in general relativity, because perhaps um, people have been a bit brainwashed, if that isn't too strong a word. Um, you know, uh, undergraduates who are first learning physics are first exposed to the special theory of relativity. And, uh, you know, this is sort of imprinted upon our mind that there's no medium that the michelson morley experiment disproved that there's a medium. It's nonsense to say there is and blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, they haven't looked at, at some of the more, you know, fundamental aspects which develop later on in physics. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I, I think there's some questions here which we might deal with in a minute. But you know, I, I, I'm just wondering, um, insofar as your, uh, your your own ideas on expansion and um, you know the Big Bang theory or the the standard um, lambda cold dark matter theory. You know, how how far would your own ideas disagree with with that? Say, with, which is normally uh, except, you know, cosmological constant and cold dark matter. Um, 
Although I, I noted that um, when you talked about Maxwell and electrodynamics and you introduced the maybe analogous application to gravito uh, magnetism, and <clears throat> I, I thought of, of uh, the work of, of uh, J.P. Wesley in this regard, where he's applied his own theories, which apply analogously to electrodynamics and, and gravito magnetism. So I'm just wondering if you have any comment on, on, on that. So, so, sorry to be lashing a lot of these ideas together, but uh, w w one of the comments, by the way, came in, or one or two of the comments, and I had also, I think your use of the world world universe model, we're, we're just wondering, um, we, we assume you just mean general universe, because world uh, can be confused with earth. You, you don't mean just, you know, relating to the earth. But we can we can come back to that. Uh, just a few more observations before we go on. Um, yeah, the the, the CMBR uh, uh, perfect black body spectrum, and how how can that <clears throat> be reconciled with expansion and so on? But but y y you say that it's it's basically because the um, uh, system is in thermal equilibrium with its surroundings. You know the medium, and, and that explains it very well. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, and you've clarified for me what, what you meant by Hubble tension. I, I, I didn't actually understand at the beginning, but you're really just talking about the quite disparate values of H, w which come out of the different uh, concepts and diff different theoretical measurements. But, but you say that you use the uh, MBR only to, to obtain those values. Um, and, and just finally, you say it's a continuation of, of Dirac's work and classical work and so on. So, so, so maybe just before the questions, uh, if you could say something about um, how how far you, your ideas uh, would differ from those generally accepted. I mean, you seem to accept some form of expansion and um, uh, fi finite nature of, of of the universe, both in in space and time. So I'll, I'll just hand it back to you, Vladimir, just maybe address a couple of those things, and uh, then we can look at some of the questions. So are, are your ideas uh, in some manner uh, not too dissimilar from some of the mainstream? Although I, I know your, your theory differs from it, and it seems to concur very much with experiment, which is very laudatory. But, um, you know, many of us here would sort of question uh, the, that there was an origin of the universe at all, and indeed uh, that the universe is finite. So I think those two postulates would be part of your theory, would they? <laughs> yes, sir. My theory principally different from general relativity. There is no connections between them at all. It is not continuation of general uh, relativity. It is rejecting the general relativity as a theory of cosmology because it's not right for now. It's obsolete. We should accept it that it is time to switch from one theory to another one. Right. Um... And by the way, just because I think um, a question had, had this had this as a question as well. Uh, I don't know, a quest ion, he seems to put his name down. But uh, so when you use the word world, like in world universe, you, you just mean general. It, it, it's not. Um, mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not um, connected with the earth, with with, you know, something very specific to the world that we live on. Let me uh, let me repeat one more time. What does it mean in my view? The world, the world we live in, the world is only hypersphere of four D nucleus. That's it. This is the world. What is important? It is finite size, finite boundless. There is no bound, and there is you know expansion in the fourth spatial dimension. It is not expansion. We have a stretching of our of our world. That's why it's there is no expansion. Expansion in the fourth spatial dimension is unacceptable for us. We cannot, we don't know it, but we know that stretching, we can see all galaxies going out 
from each other. And we don't know why, because it's stretching. That's why it's totally wrong. Big Bang model, we don't know what is the size of the universe. 93 billion light years or even more, we don't know. In my case, we have the space measure, radius of curvature. It's a real number. It's 10 to the power of 20, uh, 26 meters. That's it, simple like this. It's a finite bounds. In the universe, in my, in my model, it's only creator of dark matter in the nucleus. There are no any parameters, characteristics of the universe. It's a creator. That's it. It creates dark matter continuously in our world. Because we started with fluctuations without any matter, and we need all the time to put additional matter from universe. That's why I have to use universe, because universe something more great, let me tell in such a world. In my, in my view, it's a creator, like a god, you know, for, for me and for my mother. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm not sure if you've dealt with this because um, uh, Cornella says, oh, Vladimir, how is the accuracy of G verified in WEM? But as far as I thought, um, you showed that the, 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 the value of G coming out of, 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 of WEM was very closely in agreement with the best experimental values. Yes, man. You are absolutely right. But I calculated this value five years before, five years. I gave this number to London, to all the members of the meeting. And I told, guys, take it. It's free, without money for you. They're supposed even to do great experiments to confirm which group of the measurements correct. You know why was at that time the same problem as we had with Hubble tension, it was Newtonian gravitational parameter tension. Three groups of the measurements totally different from each other. And nobody knew which one is correct. What is my, my point was at that point? Guys, from these three measurement groups, take this one and that's it. And it turned out now six times more accurate than it was for more than 200 years, you know? And no additional experiments, nothing. There was only this Chinese experiment, which is to the power uh, to the point five, ten to the minus five, accurate as my measure the number. I was very impressed. Compare apple to apple, and you will see it is unbelievable how how exactly number I proposed five years before them. So I think you've answered uh, the quest, uh, uh, question that that did you find uh, that gravity has a different strength for, from the one that was previously agreed? You, you didn't. You you just um, uh, had something uh, in concord with the experimental, the best experimental values measured up to now. So you, you're not contradicting uh, the, the, the known values of... No, on the contrary, they decrease their accuracy, increase six times. And now this value is much closer to mine. I proposed them, uh, oh my goodness, 10 years ago. Okay. And by the way, just so I'm going through, I'm about halfway through the question. So people in the green room, please have a little patience. We'll give you plenty of time to discuss it. Um, you didn't give definitive references, but I, 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 you have published some papers, haven't you, on this, Vladimir? Yes, I have at least published 36 papers, and I have eight parts to report. That's why I cannot give you all these papers at once. I, I worked on this model 22 years. I published a lot of papers before I started right now these lectures for you. That's why be patient, wait for the next for the next presentations, and I will answer one by one all the questions. In purpose, I gave you the idea of my new model, that you will be aware which model I propose and how I will confirm all these proposals, all the points of my model during my presentations for eight months. Well, I, I'm certainly finding it very valuable because you have been in correspondence with me for some time, uh, sending me some of the you know 
publications and so on. Uh, but I, actually, for my own part, just looking at today's presentation and your, your very clear exposition of it uh, has helped me a lot. And I'm looking forward to the further parts we'll come. So let me see now. Uh, yeah, same question. Uh, so I, I think, again, you, you talked about a hypersphere, but question is asking, why, why is the hypersphere? You use that term. Yes, because it's a well-known uh, term. It's about, I don't know, Riemann here. It's, it's, oh, my goodness. I cannot even calculate. 570 years ago, he introduced, by the way, he introduced that the world might be a hypersphere 170 years ago. That's why. It's beyond the Yeah. Yeah. And hypersphere means the sphere of the 4D ball. For our standard ball, we have simple sphere, and hypersphere means only increased dimension, fourth dimension, and hypersphere is a 3D hypersphere on a 4D ball. That's it. That's a okay. definition. Okay. Um, so, I, I mean, he, he's expressing it just in black and white here, but... He, he says, you know, do you accept the Big Bang Theory? Well, I, I, I think you, you don't accept it as, as um, currently uh, postulated because you have some significant differences. But, um, but maybe to, to answer this question, do, do you accept that the universe uh, has been in existence for, for a finite period of time, like 14.22 thousand million years I think came out of your value yes yes our world exists and the absolute age of the world calculated based on gravitational parameter measured in, in, in on earth 14.22 billion years that's it there was the beginning but the beginning totally different instead of initial singularity with infinite energy density and all these mathematical tricks, inflation and all this stuff, there is none. There is a physical picture when you have some, some fluctuation with the real numbers, with size real, it's 10 to the minus 14 meters, energy density much less than our nuclear density, and then it is growing up as it should be in physics. Not in mathematics, not with all these, you know, tricks with mathematics, how to deal with infinities, infinite size of the world, of the universe, infinite density, energy. I don't like it. That, that certainly seems more satisfying because to many of us, these sort of mathematical tricks yes. have been just introduced to save existing conceptions. So it's more rational to have a physical description. So it, it, on this energy density business, uh, Cornelis just asks, what does energy density mean in, in WUM? Uh, how is the energy stored? I don't know if that can be answered simply. It's not stored. It's always additional, additional, and additional. Our, our universe, it works all the time. It's provide us with additional dark matter and the, our ordinary matter is the result, is the byproduct of dark matter particle self annihilation. Okay. Well, I think Cornelis uh, is sort of partly in the green room. He'll probably come in later and we can uh, ask him to elaborate if necessary. Um, <clears throat> uh, okay, here's another one for you. We're, we're giving you all the difficult ones. Um, uh, it's okay. It's okay. It's exactly what I no, mean. But I, right I mean, you know, we 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 can never know for certain these things. But according to your ideas, does dark matter consist of the same particles as ordinary matter? Of course not. They are totally different. And next, my presentation will be exactly about multi-component dark matter. Please have your patience on two for two weeks. I will answer all your questions about dark matter. Next I, I think that's an important uh, thing. So in two weeks' time, you'll be going in more detail. Uh, yes, yes. yes. I will tell, talk <laughs> everything about the history and everything about that matter and what is the difference between my ideas and ideas what existed for more than 200 years. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you're, you're going back... Uh, 
past Cavendish's time and so on. Um, okay. Uh, the, the others are just, uh, you know, what do you mean by classical pre-Einstein and so on? Um, I, I, actually, you didn't um, mention much uh, quantum phenomena, either good, bad, or indifferent. Will, will you be coming to those in the next time, or is, is it not particularly uh, salient? You know, there is a, it's a totally different classical physics and quantum physics. I gave even you definition. What is the difference between classical physics and quantum physics? Quantum physics is a single object. Classical physics, it's ensemble of quantum objects. I am not expert in quantum physics. I will not give you any words about the quantum physics. Okay. I am a classical physicist. I want to continue classical physics. I <laughs> want to recover classical physics after 905 when it was rejected by quantum physics. By, by special relativity, and then by quantum physics. Okay, okay, well, that, that's clear enough. Um, well, let me see, I'm just coming to the end of these. Uh, we can come back to questions. Um, so, again, I was asking, we might need a bit of patience on this, but Harry is asking, where can I get a copy of this presentation? Well, first of all, it'll be recording of uh, recorded, obviously. Um, I, I suppose... Harry, you know, by the way, it is a good proposal. It is a good proposal. I will attach to this, you know, video. I will attach text of my presentation. Then everybody can watch the video or even read my text because I was very close to the text with some small comments about it. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I think that, that will be valuable. Uh, okay, if, I'll do it. It's a good suggestion. Okay. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, I, I, I now I'm, I'm not sure if I know what this is about, and I wonder do you? Harry is asking, is your theory based on the ideas of Victor Ambertumian? Does that make sense to you? I, I can pronounce in the Russian way Ambertumian. It's okay. But what is important, I don't know such cosmologists because well-known <clears throat> cosmologists, I know all of them, all their theories and so on and so on. That's why. But I never heard about him. Okay. Dost <laughs> Vaidanya. Oh, Russian, yeah. <laughs> Russian so, goodbye, yes. Okay. Uh, now, let me see. Uh, Yeah, again, Cornell is just saying, you reject GR, but agree with curvature of space and time, which is primary to GR. Yes, I reject it. There is no general relativity in my model. Okay. It's a continuation of classical physics before general relativity. But you may be taking into account some Riemannian uh, concepts, and, and that's fine, because, because GR does as well. Uh, you know, you're entitled to. Like hypersphere and um, non-Euclidean. Hypersphere, but I told you, even the idea of hypersphere was proposed by Riemann a long time ago. You know, that's why, what is my, you know, main point is, you know, we don't know history of physics. It's a great pity for me that we miss so many genius people. They proposed ideas 200 years, 100 years ago, and we forgot about them. It's a wrong, wrong idea. That's why the, my main concern was to analyze history of classical physics, to find out what was good, what was genius, and to come back to these great ideas, right? like Mark Kulak and some other guys. I will talk <clears throat> about them later. Okay. And, and for my part, it's probably not of any consequence, but that, that is the way I operate as well, because I'm, um, you know, the sort of investigations that I've been involved in are, to my mind, an extrapolation of classical physics and, um, you know, diverging from mistakes, which I also believe were made over 100 years ago. So yes, we're, yes, we're, yes. we're maybe coming uh, <laughs> from different angles, uh, you know, to a similar thing. H Harry, this is the last point.
point we, we'll make before just coming to discussion. But Harry just mentioned further. Uh, oh goodness me, Vorontsov and Velianov. What about the ideas? Well, well, maybe Harry, if you have um, some concept uh, of those, either showing that they're in agreement with with Vladimir's ideas or contradictory thereto. Please just put a note in, and we can uh, we can do that. And if you'd like to come in the green room, uh, even better still, because I see, um, I, I see you're not there. So let's just leave those for the moment. We we can always come back. I think there may be one or two coming in further. And um, now, uh, I think I got a comment from Nick earlier that he wanted to come in. Would Would you like to come in now, Nick? Um, yeah, I, I think we, we'll we'll bring him in. Um, uh, yes. You're up now. Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit late, but since this is... Uh, I apologize eight, for that. Eight, eight parts, uh, maybe it will help. Um, <clears throat> I was I was fortunately exposed to uh, Vladimir's uh, thesis prior to these presentations, so I would just share my experience uh, as to how to listen to this series of presentations by giving my reaction and my evolutionary thinking. Um, when I went to college, my primary assumption was that uh, all the physics professors were the best minds in the world and all of their ideas had been proven to nine decimal points. So I would just have to look to learn. Uh, and then I found some things puzzling about special relativity and delved into it and eventually came to the conclusion that special relativity was only uh, inadequate, but really a step backwards. Now, one might think that would give me uh, uh, maybe a skeptical attitude about the rest of physics, but you know, when I was in the CNPS, presented with ideas about quantum mechanics, thermodynamics, cosmology, I would tend to dismiss them as not being consistent with uh, what I've been taught. And uh, that was a mistake. So um, similarly, when uh, Vladimir uh, presented some of his ideas, and I was reading, I came across dark matter, and I thought, oh, yes, someone in CNPS in has shown that dark matter is an unnecessary concept. So um, the best way to approach, particularly something of this scope, a, a change of paradigm, is not to look at things point point by point and sort of say, oh, this is, dismiss the whole thesis because it's not in accord with your particular current uh, idea of what's true and what's not true. Um, certainly, so being going through all eight presentations, I think that there's a tremendous amount of uh, new ideas that have a deal of validity behind them. So, um, yeah, by all means, ask questions about uh, for clarification or even if you. Uh, think that a particular point is is wrong, you can present, present your idea, but just keep an open mind until you have received the total gestalt uh, presentation, because I think it's the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, so that's uh, probably, probably a decent advice for any brand new ideas that are being presented to keep an open mind and be receptive to the whole idea. I think it's a wonderful series of presentations. Well, th thank you very much for expanding on that because um, you, Nick, I know, as in, indeed Vladimir mentioned at the beginning, have been uh, of use to him in formulating the papers in the first place and commenting. And I think Vladimir has always said he's made significant improvements based on your advice. Yeah, that, uh, that was a very limited improvement, nothing on his ideas, just how to present it to someone who uh, knows nothing about the area. That's what you want to do because most yes. of us here, you know, yes. <laughs> have not looked into it in the same detail. 
Uh, so, if you any uh, response to Nick uh, in regard to that, um, thanks for that advice. Anyway. Yes, yes, I want to tell Nick. Thank you so much for helping me how to present my results because you know it is the most difficult part for me to have scientific publications and then to go to the lecture. That's why it was very important what you proposed, what you suggested, even suggestions to read my text was very right, very right. That's why I will continue the same way all these you know, parts. The main goal for this particular part one was the medium only. What I expect from you guys only to accept that medium does exist. There are confirmation of medium, at least three different parts, and it's absolute frame of reference. Please take it as a law right now. The second point, what I tried to show you, to give you that in, in accordance with my model, I can calculate all these parameters, Hubble's parameter, temperature of microwave background radiation, this peak of uh, cosmic far infrared background radiation, intergalactic plasma, and all these parameters that I calculated in 2013, and then I had a confirmation of them, always confirmation, and each confirmation was later, and it was very close to calculated by model. It's exactly advantage of my model that there was a prediction, and then it was a confirmation. Even minimum energy of photons. Nobody believed, oh, photons, they have no mass at all. And I told, no, guys, there is some minimum energy. Photons, they cannot have less. And then in four years, you know, somebody measured and told, yes, he's right. It's close enough to what I calculated before. That's why, please, don't overreact on the whole model because it's very difficult to take it as it is. I wanted only to give you the brief ideas of the model and then to talk about medium only. And then part by part, I will do my best to recover each point of this model. I gave it to you without details. And I will try to prove that it in the full, it will give you full job when I will finish my part number eight on 6th of July. Yes, you're very early in the morning there. Um, but I, I must confess that I, I had some very, very slight misgivings myself um, in that one had to keep uh, the audience, who, who are mainly technically conversant, but they're not specialists, engaged. And I, I felt that uh, it might be too turgid having so many parts of, of, of a... It, it's a very comprehensive theory, and it does need all that. Um, but actually, today, I can say that any of my misgivings have been completely vaporized because you, 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 you've, you've presented something which is very, very interesting, I think. And I, I would appeal to people, I'll do this maybe in the summary as well, to await the further presentations, which I think will, will be all, you know, just like that. They won't be very difficult to um, get through. Um, so, um, it, 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 Nick, is uh, that a, let me just add that, uh, you know, since Vladimir is a fire hose of information, um, don't get overwhelmed by, you know, tons of empirical data and feel you have to memorize them or all these equations. Just be sure you're um, following it conceptually. The point is, the only point you have to remember is the empirical data is confirming these concepts. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Um, <clears throat> You're okay. absolutely right, Nick. Thank you so much. It's exactly my intention to give you ideas and then to go with numbers without details how I've got it because it's too much mathematics and people, they don't like mathematics. Yes. Uh, actually, one of the comments here, which I didn't put up, um, was, oh, could the maths people just tell us, it, it, does this look all right? But uh, actually, dare I say it, uh, the, the mathematics that you uh, showed there was elementary. It, it was just, you know, quantifying the, 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 the parameters or the measured values. Uh, and you, you've obviously been very kind to us in keeping complex mathematics away from us. But if anybody wants to go into that in more detail, they can... Uh, 
they can look at the references, which, which may become apparent after you've finished the presentations of the various parts. Okay, well, we have a number of other people in the in the green room, and I'm just wondering, um, uh, James J. Keane, Jim, um, I, I'm wondering if you'd forgive me if I just imposed upon you and ask you for your valued response. You know, uh, again, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, I, it, are, are you looking well, forward I to the other seven parts, or do you think we're really going too far by imposing this upon you? Well, I, I want to thank Vladimir for this first of several presentations, and uh, but I, I, I don't have any questions or comments right now, except to, to uh, thank our speaker for the day. Well, well, thank you very much, and uh, it's actually very valuable for us to get that comment from you because you're a critical man. I don't mean you're a difficult man. You know, if if somebody makes mistakes or says something which is illogical, you always come in. You know, I, I don't blame you for that. I'm delighted. <laughs> so to have a positive comment like that, and you're you're not criticizing uh, uh, Vladimir for any uh, illogical. Thank you very much for not criticizing me. <laughs> well, well, no, he, he he would. If somebody says something which is illogical, Jim will always come in. You know, and I say, "Oh, you're dead right there." Um, but it's a good confirmation that I've done good job because it's exactly what is wrong with Big Bang Moon. There is no logic. There is no logic. Most of the results, supposedly, wavelengths of photon is increasing in the wavelengths because of the expansion of space. I don't understand this, you know, sentence even. Where is the logic? Thank That's you. why. Thank you so much. You followed my logic, and I am satisfied. It exactly was my intention that you will see the logic of my model, and you will not find something. Horrible against logic. Yeah, we might be paying you back in a minuscule way. I mean, you're devoting so much of your endeavors to explain to us all, all this copious information. And we might be able to pay you back in a very, very small way by, you know, by acting as a critical audience and giving you positive or sometimes negative or constructive <laughs> comments back. I, I'd be very happy if people do that. So, so don't hold back. Um Okay, I, I think we have a couple of people who are a bit more mainstream. They don't seem to be here today. Just looking at the comments. So, uh, Jim, thank you very much, and we'll we'll uh, we'll we'll Bye revert much. to you uh, in the further parts. When they thank come. you, Jim. <clears throat> now, um, Cornelis ha had some questions, which I went through very very briefly. I, I don't know if his um, his camera is not on and his. Uh, Microphone is not on at the moment, but I, if he's there, uh, he could maybe expand a bit more on, on the points that I went through very quickly. Th there you are, Cornelis. Yeah, you were asking about energy density, and then you, I think you were also questioning, well, what parts uh, of the Big Bang, if any, uh, sun here in the background. <laughs> yeah, you're always in a different place. I notice you, you seem to be more at home now than you were well I, I won't be at the blood services donating blood anymore they just di diagnosed us some sarcoma cancer so i'm out of luck diagnosed oh, well, it, i hope it's, I hope it's minor but it keeps me out of donating blood for a year or so yeah I'll, I'll, every I'll cloud has a silver lining dare i say it in that way that's typically what i'm doing when i listen to these congresses is, is doing that it just happens to be a double use of the time uh but uh there's a lot of information that was just packed. I mean, uh, I think we could have gone through the, it a little bit more. And I think maybe what Vladimir plans on doing in the future is going back and going through in greater detail. I'm uh, more interested in, in the mechanism of these transformations from a flat uh, surface to uh, the uh, dark matter uh, particles and then from the dark matter particles to the electron, proton, neutron, and, and which which Vladimir says that you know those items, uh, the uh, oh, pro proton, electron, and photons and neutrinos and dark matter are the are the media. Uh, but what would be the more fundamental media would seem to be the media that they emerge from, and that media to me would be the uh, 
what is being rejected is not existing, it, it would be the uh, ether, right? Uh, so, because it, it's fundamentally what carries the wave in that. So I'm not sure, uh, hopefully I'll get clarification in that in the future with, with it, but he's also got a fourth dimension in there. And I asked a question there, uh, is the fourth dimension, uh, which is basically the volume of the sphere, the, in, the internals of the, of the sphere that the surface is on, is that time in, uh, as in time in Einstein's theory is time is the fourth dimension. What is the fourth dimension in, in uh, Vladimir's theory that occupies that volume of that sphere that the surface is built upon? Let's uh, just get um... the, the first question about the fourth dimension. It's a spatial dimension. It is not time. Time is not dimension. Time is a factor of my world. Fourth dimension is spatial. This is the answer to the first question. That's why it is not what we have in general relativity. The second point, you know, ether, it's like a perfect fluid. Nobody can give you the characteristic of it. Nobody can give you the content of it. We have, I will give you an example. We have an air around us. We can cal cal calculate it like, oh, we have your medium around us, or we can saturate this medium with different molecules, uh, oxygen, hydrogen, and all this stuff. It's exactly the difference of my multi-component dark matter system against any liquid, perfect liquid, ether, whatever. It's like something without any parameters. It's only something. I don't like this something. I'm a physicist. I do like to have something inside of this ideal perfect medium. You know, that's why let's wait for the next my presentation about multi-component dark matter system and you will find out how rich content of our medium is it's not something you know like a i don't know how to name it it's not a real medium what it was accepted by the existing theories it is something real it's exactly what i want to prove next time but what is important, even today, I, I talk with you about intergalactic plasma, you know, protons and electrons, and see how it plays, the, the content of it, the number of it, and how you can calculate based on this intergalactic plasma. You can calculate temperature of microwave background radiation, minimum energy of photons, and so on and so on. You saw it's only the first step of the some concrete realization of the medium and immediately you have results ex that corresponds to experimental and measured values. J John Hodge was in the green room, but he's left it. I think he, he's been having some um, internet problems. He gave us a presentation some weeks ago, but I think he has a question here. He just says, particles implies not continuous. Well, I, I'm not quite sure if he's if he's getting to the discreteness of uh, various quantities in quantum uh, conception, or, or just just a point that yes, particles versus um, versus waves, perhaps. I don't know if you have any comment on that, Vladimir. I, I mean, do, do you favour uh, a particle model of light or, or a wave model of light? You know, you one might ask. That. You know, I told you, let me repeat only the answer on the same question. Photons are particles. You can name them, but I don't know how to name them. But it's a quantum object. That's why each photon is a quantum object that have only four momenta. That's it. Quant wavelengths, it is the parameter of the ensemble of photons. If you have your flow of photons, the lambda is like you have the size of this, you know, batch of this ensemble of photons going together. 
That's it. You know, it's a totally different story. Quant, quant, quantum objects, it's single. Classical physics, it's an ensemble of quantum objects. Like molecules in our air. We have temperature, it's characteristic of ensemble of particles. Each particle has kinetic energy only. That's it. That's why, please, don't even compare. It's two different physics, quantum physics and classical physics. And I don't like this contemporary classic physics with elements of general relativity, quantum physics, and so on and so on. It's a mixture. It should be split. Quantum physics, please continue. Classical physics, please continue. And there is a border be between them, ensemble, ensemble of particles. So in some descriptions, um, they, they include um, relativity, special and, and general, in classical physics description, actually. They say, well, the quantum world is, is post-classical. But in other um, descriptions, which I, I would have been more familiar with earlier on, um, relativity would be part of non-classical physics. But I noticed that a lot of um, writers now are considering uh, th that has been classical in the sense that it's, um, you know, it's not a complete departure uh, mm -hmm. from, from you know, th like things like common sense, uh, Co Copenhagen interpretations and cats being alive and dead and all that sort of thing and collapsing wave functions. But these are just definitions. So they're a bit arbitrary, I suppose. And they depend on the, uh, the actual author who's being quoted. Um, okay, there are a number of... Uh... Comments coming in. Uh, I mean, Cornell is again just asking about the fourth dimension. He says, Vladimir, you say the fourth dimension is not detectable during his presentation. How is it then a real dimension? Fourth dimension, spatial. What do you mean, real? We are so 3D bodies. We have 3D minds. It's not real for us, it's inaccessible. And what is important, I told you in my model. All the parameters depends on Q. It's only witness for the existence of the fourth spatial dimension. That's it. We, 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 we cannot do it. We cannot see the fourth space dimension, spatial dimension. Yeah, this comment is, is along the same lines. The real dimensions are just three. Um, yeah. But what is important, it is not the, the time dimension. No. It is a real fourth-dimensional space. Um, I, 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 that must be referring to Newton. I don't know, John Hodge, in his book, Optics. Just to maybe that might have followed the mathematical dimension or something. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, we've exhausted the green room. Unfortunately, there are a couple of people who... Uh, our regulars and um, have asked some questions even that they might have gone in through the social media. Um, uh, yeah, well, just on, further on the classical things, John Hodge says, is Newtonian physics classical? Newton had an ether separate from particles. I mean, I dare say yes. Uh, yes, yes. Said. They he introduced ether for some different reasons, because at that time it was a competition between particles and waves, particles and waves. And it was so named, by the way, particle waves dualism up to now. And people, they are confused. Photon, it's a particle or it's a wave. You see, in Big Bad model, photon is a wave. In, the, in other words, it's wrong, because as I told you, wavelengths, it's ensemble of photons. That's it. We are looking for wavelength, wavelengths. And quantum objects, we cannot see them. It's a single object. It's a quantum physics. Please describe it with the right mathematics, with the right approach, different from the classical physics. By the way, in quantum physics, even all the notions, what they have right now, it's a classical notions, like C, Electrodynamic constant, it's a alpha, it is, you know, fine structure constant. Then, you know, ash plan constant, it's like a most important notion for quantum physics. But Planck constant came from the black body radiation. It was 
statistical classical physics. That's it. There was no quantum physics at that time. That's why even notions, what they have right now, they came from classical physics. Please think about it. Why in quantum physics we use our classical notions? It's my opinion about it. Yeah, I'm not expert in quantum physics. They're fairly fundamental. But but on the, the light uh, duality business, I mean, the textbooks simplistically say, oh, Newton uh, favored particles because he the corpuscles uh, of, of light. And then uh, that, that was accepted possibly because of Newton's um, reputation until maybe Thomas Young did experiments much later. And then the wave uh, model was accepted uh, until quantum times when um, one experiment seemed to be so contradictory that, you know, that they had prop one time, they had one property and one another. Uh, and then I think it was Bragg who said, well, on a Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, they have wave properties. And on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, they have particle properties. So that's just a It's a great joke. Yeah, I absolutely agree with him. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I just see one or two comments coming in, uh, <clears throat> trying to deal with them at the same time. Where's the most uh, Hasn't heat transparency, tension, etc., or possible fourth dimension of the in this sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jim actually has come back to say, um, I'd like to see one presentation of one, the, the uh, I think called a VUM, but it's WM, postulate assumptions, uh, and two, it's mathematical model. Then all else applications, etc., can be presented. Maybe it has no mathematical model. Well, I think in, in the further presentations, that will sort of come out, um, you know, because you'll be dealing with different aspects of... of um, let me tell you a few words about the mathematics. I have a special published paper that names mathematical mathematics of my model. I can refer to this particle because I am trying always to avoid too much mathematics. I'm talking about the ideas. The most important for me are concepts. Please listen to my ideas. And the confirmation of these ideas I can give you the formula, the equations I gave it today to you. And if you want to details how it happens, I will give you the information about the published paper and you can find all the mathematics together in one batch. Okay, I, I think that's very important. Well, you know, the time is creeping up on us and the, 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 we might just about have a few minutes for, for you to summarize and maybe a few minutes for me to uh, close the meeting and just tell people what, what we're going to expect next. So um, I'll give you, um, I'll give the floor to you to, to, to take a couple of minutes or if you want to take five minutes, up to you, a minute or two, five minutes, uh, just to summarize um, what, what you've done today and maybe respond to any reactions and maybe, um, you know, sort of uh, confirm to people that uh, a lot of these issues will be dealt with in, in subsequent presentations. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank everybody who came to this meeting to, to, to listen to me and to take part in this meeting, answering, uh, uh, answering some questions, listening to my answers for interest in my work. Thank you so much, guys. It is very important. It is the very first my report, my lecture today, and it's a very important part of it to understand how to proceed, how to present my data, and how to deal with normal people with not high education in mathematics, but the ideas. My main, co my main, co my main comment is listen to my co content, listen to my ideas, listen to what I'm talking about, follow my logic. If you have any questions with my logic, I will appreciate it because it's a very important for me to have your evaluation of my model. Then I can proceed with the next pass. Please have your patience because it will be eight parts and the last one will be about classical physics. What should be done with classical physics? How we should update it due to the developed new model of cosmology, of new physics. Thank you so much for coming today. I hope to see you next time. 
It will be in two weeks. I will talk about multi-component dark matter, and I will try to convince you that it really exists, and I will saturate our world with an ensemble of different dark matter particles. Thank you so much for today's meeting, and good luck to you for two weeks, and I'm waiting for you next time. Bye now. Well, th thank you very much again, uh, Vladimir. And uh, it just devolves upon me to occupy the next um, couple of minutes and just officially closing the meeting. But I, I, I'd, I'd repeat uh, what I intimated a moment ago, that I did have some reservations about going through uh, so many parts on this model. And I thought it might uh, sort of you know, frighten people if we told them too much about that. But actually, um, I'm quite uh, satisfied now, having heard today, that this is going to be a very productive enterprise and it's going to be quite exciting as well. And um, the, the only maybe negative thing is that a lot of the questions that are occurring to us now are perhaps best dealt with after the other parts have been have been considered, particularly next week, where we'll be looking at things like dark matter and, you know, whether it's a good concept or not, or whether it's a different concept from the one which is normally displayed. Um, but, you know, I, I'm convinced that we'll have a very uh, significant series of lectures. There will be a break, as I say, after the next one, it, it just uh, reverting to some other topic, and then we'll, we'll continue again. And I, I think actually looking at it globally, we we, we shall have have, have have had the opportunity of really uh, being exposed to a significant series of lectures, which really one could go to one of the universities and pay a hefty sum, I dare say, to have some professor <laughs> lecture you on, on some of those ideas. And we'll have the opportunity of, of going through those and having, uh, you know, Vladimir himself uh, presenting his ideas and answering any specific questions on that. And of course, um, it doesn't end with the actual two hours uh, of the session. I mean, if it's any subsequent time you you have other problems, we can deal with them or we can put you directly in contact with Vladimir. And we've been doing that in the past. Um, like, And if you missed anything, of course, the recording is available immediately afterwards. So, you know, immediately after the session ends, you can go back and you can even stop and rewind and obviously play at a slower speed if you wish. So I, I think we'll have a very valuable record for the future. And um, I, I'm quite convinced now that uh, we made the right decision in uh, devoting the, the coming months, actually, because these are only held every two weeks, these technical sessions. Um, yeah, that, that's right. We could watch again. Um, so over the coming months, we'll have the opportunity of, of going through this. And it's a bit like, uh, I, I think Nick said it was a gestalt, you know, it, it, it's a German concept where, where in philosophy, where um, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. And I think, I think uh, Vladimir will be demonstrating uh, very much uh, that in the future. So uh, I, I think uh, we, we, we have a lot to... Uh, Digest, and I'm going to have to look at some of my ideas again vis-a-vis -vis the recording. I'll, I'll, I'll have, a, have a brief look at that when I have some time, and um, go into some some of the other ideas. And starting from the universal gravitational constant and coming out to this very very wide uh, universe world universe model. Uh, and Vladimir has has uh, given us the benefit of of his. Uh, years of research and he's put this together in a very extensive means and to boot he's got up very early in the morning i actually didn't realize he was on the west coast of the united states in california i thought he was in the east coast so yeah, i'm blithely assuming everything's all right but he's getting up at some unearthly hour uh, to me on on a saturday morning um uh, yeah okay so um I, please uh, bear with us. I'm sure you haven't been frightened away. Come back in two weeks' time. We'll have the announcement out exactly what part two will be about and how, how it, we, we can deal with some of the questions perhaps that came up today that it, it would have been a bit um, irrelevant to deal with again because we will be repeating, repeating them in two weeks' time with more detail. Uh, so th thank, thank you all for attending. Thank you, people in the media social media and of course the green room 
Uh, th thank you for your contributions. And um, of course, last but not least, I must thank our speaker, Vladimir, who's gone to considerable uh, trouble. And actually, there was no problem persuading him. We didn't say, oh, I'm not available that and blah, blah, blah. When we just proposed dates and we said, you know, we, we have, I think it was the 13th of April is, is, is bespoke already. Could we break it there? And it would maybe be a good idea to break. He, he said, that's fine with me. I'll work around that. No problem at all. So uh, thank you very much, Vladimir, and we look forward to uh, your continued participation in, in conferences, and in particular in your part two presentation in two weeks' time. So uh, with, with with just a few minutes uh, to spare, with about four minutes to spare, I'll uh, I'll stop the, um, the 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 recording now, and I'll wish you all wherever you are in the world a very good day. <laughs>